Hello everyone, welcome to lab today. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, thanks for joining me. We're gonna talk about geologic maps today. Uh, geologic maps do a great job at telling us all about the resources of an area, uh, where we can find um, deposits of, of things like coal and oil, uh, rocks for landscaping and for uh, uh, building stones, uh, and how the rocks look underfoot when, we, when we're talking about construction projects and things, things of the like. Uh, geologists go through and study uh, areas, uh, looking at the rocks that are sticking up out of the ground, taking samples of the rocks down below by using drill cores, which are basically like big straws that you stick through a layer cake, pull it up and you can see through the clear straw, the layers, the yummy, yummy layers that you find below. Um, and geologic maps can also tell us about the history of an area and uh, what the uh, environment was like, what kinds of animals lived there, and it gives us uh, a a uh, little snippet of a history of an area and the broader picture then uh, when we take all these little studies together Illinois, uh, Indiana, Iowa, we can get a whole picture of how the region looked and really if we put it all together how the whole area looked. So um, geologic maps and the study of the rocks underfoot are uh, very useful uh, helpful and we're going to talk about them today. So buckle up it's geologic maps. All right, so welcome to part one of the lab. And in part one, you have a series of questions to complete. Uh, and the part one is on the geologic maps background. And these questions can be answered using uh, the material that you find in page one, two, and three of the lab. Uh, but I wanna go through and give you a little bit of an introduction and background to the things you're reading uh, so that you get a better sense of how this all operates. First off is that you are looking at a geologic map. And geologic maps, as I described earlier, uh, give us a sense of what the Earth's history was like, what the resources were like, uh, what sorts of things we need to look for when sinking into foundations for buildings and roads. Uh, so they're very useful. And studies like this have been done all over the world, not just in Illinois, but in the neighboring states, all over the U.S. and all over the world. And these studies, uh, and you can see here, this is Illinois study, um, but these stories, when put together, actually can give us a, a look at what the Earth's history was like. And so geologists have been able to put together all the information over um, um, you know, hundreds of years of studies and put together what is known as the geologic time scale. And the geologic time scale, pictured here, is a history of the Earth from its very formation all the way up through today. Uh, much of Illinois' history takes place in the Paleozoic um, from the rocks that we see. There's some Cretaceous age rocks and also some younger rocks. And we see uh, these, uh, the fossils in these. And then of course, uh, we know that uh, a lot of these rocks, the oldest being on the bottom and the youngest being on the top, they tell us uh, the kind of the history of Illinois. And when we, when we pair it with everything else that's been studied around the world, it gives us a broad picture of what's going on. Um, so, in order to get information about Illinois, we've studied each one of these rocks, and you can see there are different colors here. The different colors represent, represent the different rock formations, and a rock formation is a grouping of rocks that have similar characteristics and similar fossils in them. And each of the different rock um, types here are pictured in a different color so that you can see uh, which rock formation is which, and each uh, color, it represents the rock formation, it's given a symbol. And the symbol is an abbreviation of the geologic age of the formation and also the name of the formation. And typically formations are named based on uh, the area or different um, features within the area. So you can see on this geologic map of Illinois, we have different formations in, given by different colors. And it gets even more specific over here. The different formations uh, in this legend here are shown in colors with the youngest on the top, tertiary, uh, rocks and Cretaceous rocks moving down. You can see where there are different parts in Illinois have these. Um, again, the symbol here along with the color represents the formation and the symbol is, uh, um, is uh, give, gives the name of the formation and the age of the formation. So you can see here all of these have the geologic age from the geologic time scale, for example, Pennsylvanian or Mississippian. 
and the, the capital letter at the front of the symbol represents the geologic age, either Pennsylvania, Mississippi, et cetera. And then the rest of the letters, and the, this, they didn't have room down here, so they put the, the bottom of this column and to, the, to the side of this. But you can see here, here's some more Devonian. These are older Silurians, even older than Devonian. You can see where the, those are. The little letter, the, the lowercase letter, represents the name of the system, or, or sorry, the name of the formation. So, for example, the Ordovician um, OM stands for Ordovician, and the M stands for Makokata Formation, or group. So the Makokata Formation is named because uh, these rocks are typically found in Makokata, Illinois, uh, or Galena, Illinois. Uh, or there's a good number of OP in Platteville. So, so they name uh, these after... Uh, the area. So uh, that's kind of a look at what we're seeing here in a geologic map uh, of Illinois with the colors representing each of the formations and uh, each of the formations of course are a grouping of rocks and fossils that are similar and then uh, the symbols uh, are based on the geologic age and the name of the formation. Uh, there are also some other uh, details that we see on a geologic map. In addition to this legend, they have some uh, many different features, uh, different um, things about how this area was mapped. And then on the back of the geologic map, it shows, just slipped over for us. On the back of the geologic map, it shows a lot of great information too, like uh, a side view. Like if we were to cut Illinois from the side and pull it over like it was a big la layer of yummy cake, we would see from north to south, this is what Illinois would look like from the side. And again, from east to west here, um, or west to east, uh, you would see what it, it looks like uh, from the side. And those are actually called cross sections. A to A prime here is this one. That's what Illinois looks like from the side there. And the cross section B to B prime across the southern part of the state. This is what it looked like if you cut the southern part of the state and look at the layers from the side. Now, geologists take drills, and they, as I said before, like they're like um, basically hollow tubes that they drill down and they pull out sections of the rock so they can see what rock is what. And they've done this all over the state to find that. And actually there's further detail about each of the rocks uh, that you find in this so-called stratigraphic column. Again, this one shows the color, but it also shows the rock type and the formation names uh, for, for the Southern Illinois, which is that one, and the Northern Illinois part, which is that one. But this is a geologic map, and these are some of the features you find on it. We're gonna use this today in order to help us uh, get a better sense of how um, Illinois uh, looks uh, from the side and from the top. Um, one other feature I want to point out is that uh, the, um, in this part here where it talks about deformation, it talks about the faults, which I showed you there. Uh, it also talks about um, anticlines, synclines, which are folds caused by tectonic forces, domes and basins, which can be caused by tectonics and magma and and subsidence and different things, but uh, these features you see in various parts of Illinois. The whole southern part of Illinois is actually a big basin. It looks like a big bullseye. Let me show you that real quick. Uh, and you can see here the southern part of Illinois. It, this is like the cereal, and the and the lighter color blue is like the bowl. Uh, but you. Um, you can see the kind of basin structure that has formed and rocks formed within there. Um, this formed during a time when Illinois was covered by vast swamplands in the southern part of Illinois. Uh, and it actually formed up nice coal layers deeper in the earth. Um, so uh, this is an overview of the topics that you'll find in the introduction and that will help you answer the questions in part one. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, after you complete that, I'm going to take you through a tour of part two, uh, which is uh, looking at some specific features and formations on the geologic map. So uh, let's do that. Okay, so here we are in part two, bedrock geology of Illinois, uh, specifically looking at the formations, the geologic formations in DeKalb County. The first question asks how many different formations are mapped in DeKalb County? And for us here, here, the boundary of DeKalb County is along here, uh, up through here, across and down. So DeKalb County is a kind of a tall, thin uh, county. Uh, and going through and counting all the different uh, formations, we have uh, OG right here. And if you trace this one around, uh, this one is OP and then OA. So there's three right there. OM is a fourth. 
this purple one, if you look to the side, is an SU, that's fifth. Then our C is a sixth one. And this uh, this one right here, this lighter color, is an OPDC seven. So there are seven formations mapped into Kelp County. And uh, when you look at them listed here, I went ahead and listed them. The seven are O, G, O, A, O, P, O, M, S, U, C, and O, P, D, C, okay? The next question asks, what's the name of the youngest formation in the county? Uh, and that would, uh, the answer to that would take us to the legend at the bottom left corner of the map. So let's go take a look at the legend. Okay, so here we are at the legend of the map. And the legend at the map is in the bottom left corner. And the legend tells us the relative age and also the names of the formations. So for number 12, when it asks, what is the name of the youngest formation in the county? Recall that our younger uh, our formations went from o OPDC, uh, C, S, U, O, M, O, A, O, G, uh, which we listed in the last question. Um, when we come down here and look specifically, the formations for DeKalb County are listed here. So you've got uh, Cambrian, uh, which uh, the C here, and the name of that formation is Cam Cambrian System, okay? And the age of it is Cambrian. And then we've got all these O's here. Most of these O's are in our county. Those are of Ordovician age, and the symbol, um, with the color shows what the formation is and it lists it first. It's so the OM is Makokata formation or group. Uh, OG is Galena group. Um, OP is Platteville group. OA is Ansel group. And Prairie de Chine group, OPDC. And then further up, we have the SU, and that would be the youngest. That one is Eight, its age is Silurian, its symbol is SU, its color is purple, and it's the formation name, Silurian System Undivided. So in number 12, it asks us for the formation name uh, of the youngest formation, that would be Silurian System Undivided. How do I know that this is the youngest? Well, with a stratigraphic column and any kind of um, geologic ages, the oldest are at the bottom and the youngest are at the top. So in this scenario here, Cambrian would be the old, very oldest of the rocks in the formations. Ordovician, next oldest. Silurian would be more young. So number 13 then asks, what's the oldest, or what's the relative age of the oldest formation in the county? Uh, and again, as we tune in here, the youngest was Silurian here. If we go down here, the oldest would be Cambrian. So the relative age of the oldest is Cambrian. For number 14, what symbol, name, and relative age of the geologic formation under Kishwaukee College? Or what is that? So uh, Kishwaukee College, of course, is just west of DeKalb here, uh, just west of Malta, actually. So Malta is in this um, darker pink color. Uh, you go, you, Kishwaukee College would actually be right about here in the lighter pink color, uh, believe it or not. So uh, as a result, um, the formation symbol is OG. And if you look down at the legend, OG is the Galena group. And the O of the symbol represents the geologic age. And the G represents the formation name. So Galena group. And then the O is for Ordovician. And that's the geologic age of that formation. All right, number 15 asks for the longest fault in the state map. Now, the faults um, are indicated by these uh, lines here, okay? Uh, the black lines with the um, uh, uh, perpendicular lines running through, okay? So when you look over the map, um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of take you into where some of the faults are. Here are the faults in Southern Illinois. There's a great number of faults here, as you can see, all along this zone here in Southern Illinois, particularly in this area. This one right here, it's known as the Hicks Dome. Um, it's probably an um, igneous intrusion that came up, pushed the rocks up, and caused the whole area to uplift and fault a little bit. Um, there's also the so-called uh, Lusk Creek um, fault zone and the Shawneetown fault zone and then some more here down in southern part of Illinois. 
uh, the faults in Southern Illinois are rel relevant and probably related to a, a bigger system in the whole um, central part of the U.S. called the New Madrid Fault System. And it's thought that, and it's named after the, the town New Madrid, Missouri, where we had large earthquakes in 1811 and 1812. But it's thought that um, the whole area kind of experienced this um, kind of crustal um, melting where the area magma came up from below, melted the crust in kind of a, a wide zone in the southern parts of uh, Missouri and Illinois and northern parts of Kentucky and, and Arkansas. And um, the crust kind of melted a little bit and dropped down and so there's this uh, faulting going on because of the shifting that took place. It's thought that this is a failed rift, a stalled system, but that's where we think the faults came here. Um, the longest fault though, and you can see that these are pretty long down here, uh, extending um, a big range, but at the longest fault uh, has to be, we have to take come and take a look at the northern part of Illinois, and you can probably pick it out here from my wobbly camera, but that is the Sandwich Fault. And the Sandwich Fault is a very large fault line uh, where we have um, Cambrian rocks, old rocks here on this side, and, uh, and uh, kind of younger uh, Ordovician rocks on this side. And it might have been a situation where this popped up and kind of eroded away. Um, as it eroded away, uh, left um, the older rocks up uplifted. Um, a lot of glaciers came through this area. And as the glaciers came through, they were heavy. So they pushed down on the lithosphere. Um, and as they melted away, all that weight of the glaciers, which were about a mile thick um, over the, the northern part of Illinois, as the... The glaciers melted, and this happened several times, of course, but as the glaciers melted, uh, there was a lot of um, release of pressure, and so the rocks pop, 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 pop up, and those cause earthquakes. Uh, you may have remember, recalled an earthquake that occurred um, several years ago around here in the early morning hours, but uh, that would be because of something like that, um, and that's called isostatic adjustment, where the crust responds to weight um, it sinks down into the ascenosphere when it's heavy and rises up from the ascenosphere when it's light. So that is the longest fault in northern Illinois. Um, we are then asked for the most abundant fault systems, and that's southern Illinois. That's for number 16. And then finally, when you look at the overall picture of Illinois, it asks you to look at the southern portion. And you can see in the southern portion, we've got this kind of bullseye pattern with the blue here. Uh, the darker blue than the lighter blue surrounding it, and then a kind of aqua blue surrounding that. I'm terrible with colors, but um, you can kind of see that circular pattern. The blue rock in the middle, that's younger. If you look at the stratigraphic column and compare the ages of the uh, rocks here, uh, the the darker blue here is, is younger and the lighter blues are older. So Illinois, the whole central part of Illinois is a large basin. Okay, moving on to Southern Illinois coal. Um, in that question, we're going to look at the back of the map. So actually on the back of the map, it's got lots of nifty things as well here. So if you look at the back of the map are these stratigraphic columns. This is a stratigraphic column for the um, southern part of Illinois and the, the rock formations you see in more detail. The formations are listed here and, and all the different details about them. Uh, we couldn't get into that detail in the front because there wasn't room. And then over here is this, the northern rocks. The rocks in the northern part of Illinois are listed here in greater detail. Uh, so uh, pretty interesting stuff uh, to, to find and, and mass, uh, massive studies have been done in all these different things here. Uh, but we're going to focus on the Southern Illinois uh, stratigraphic column, and it's asking us about the coal layers. And as I said before, Illinois was kind of a swamp land about 300 million years ago, and it left behind coal layers. So if you zoom in on the Southern Illinois, and I'm going to try to get rid of the glare here, the Southern Illinois uh, stratigraphic column, it shows the system series stage of the different formations, and it gives the formation names here, okay? And then it gives the color of the, the formation and the, and the types of rocks you would find. And they, um, geologists have gone through and um, set down drill cores to verify this information and to see what layers are what and where. And then it even gives details about uh, what is in it. So this is a shale layer with some coal interleaved in between. And as, as you go down, you'll see that there's more of these little coal layers in here until you get to really significant coal layers where uh, people are actually going in and mining this stuff. Um, you can see here the Flanagan coal and the Chapel coal. 
and the Danville coal. And so if you're a company and you want to mine this stuff, and you can see there's a lot of coal layers here in this particular Carbondale formation right here, uh, there's a lot of coal layers. So if you're a company, you're going to want to dig into that Carbondale formation if, if you have a spot where you can set down. And, and of course, Carbondale is in the southern part of Illinois. So uh, if you're going to build a coal mine, that's a good place to go. Uh, but you can go see that they're all the way in these Mississippian and Pennsylvanian layers here, primarily Mississippian. And they stop as you get a little bit further down into the bottom of the Mississippian. If you go through and count the named coal layers, there are... Um, let's count them. We start at the very bottom where we find the first coal layer and move up from there. We've got one, two, Bell Coal, Rock Island Coal, three, Delwood Coal, four, Murfreesboro Coal, five, Mount Aurora Coal, six, uh, and the Decoven and Davis Coal are seven and eight, part of the Sealyville Coal. So we'll just let's call those seven and eight. Colchester Coal, nine, Servant Coal, 10, Hoochin Coal, Hoochin Creek Coal, 11, Springfield Coal, 12, Heron Coal, 13, Danville Coal, 14, Chapel Coal, 15, and Flanagan Coal, 16. Uh, and actually, since Sealyville Coal is there, we'll call it 17. So let's, let's call it 17 layers of coal. Uh, in the stratigraphic column for the southern part of Illinois. Again, um, geologic maps have many uses, but this is definitely one of them where you can kind of find resources uh, like coal, and there's actually some oil deposits in the southern part of Illinois there as well. Remember, coal is formed from ancient plants or swamp, swamp land, and so the swamp, uh, much of the southern part of Illinois was covered in vast swamp lands during the Mississippian and Pennsylvanian periods about 300 million years ago. So the good deal of the southern part of Illinois was covered in vast swampland. Okay, questions 19 and 20 in part two deal with the southern Illinois formations in the Cretaceous age. Um, again, not a lot of dinosaur bones in these um, as part of the, the Cretaceous being the last part of the age of the dinosaurs. Um, but we do think that there was shallow seas that actually came all the way up to the southern part of Illinois uh, and left behind deposits um, uh, that are indicative of a ocean front property there in southern Illinois. Um, in the late Cretaceous, the temperature of the earth was way warmer than it is today, about 10 degrees C warmer. And so there was a lot of um, water covering the earth and a lot of, much of the south was covered in oceans, uh, believe it or not. No uh, glacial ice or sea ice of any kind. Um, but the areas here in southern Illinois are covered with this uh, Cretaceous age, uh, uh, ocean deposit and you can see here um, this green one here it's asking what the symbol used and you can clearly see it's KU if you come over to our stratigraphic column and look at that um, KU is part of that suite down there of Cretaceous undivided it includes Post Creek, uh, McNary, Owl Creek formations in southern Illinois um, and there's some in western Illinois as well but KU is the answer for number 19 and then when you come to 20 it says You've observed a lot of faults, and we talked about these faults in the southern part of Illinois here. Um, as you look at these faults, it's asking, do the faults cut across the formation, or do the form formation cut the faults? Um, and if you look at all these faults here, you can see that there's fault here, 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 here. So what that means is that the formation had to be there before it was faulted. So the formation is older than the faults. Um, so the majority of the faults, the formation is oldest. It says, um, do the faults cut across the green formation or does the formation cut across the faults? And the answer is that the faults cut across the green formation. And so it says, therefore, are they younger or older than the green formation? They must be younger. So this formation had to get laid down before these faults came in. So we know that these faults are, are relatively young, uh, that these faults are probably um, in the order of less than 65 million years old. Uh, there's a couple, few faults in here that are younger that the formation, or sorry, that they're older than the formation that cut across, but the primary answer here is that um, the faults cut across the formation, so they are younger than that Cretaceous formation. Um, and that's how we use faults and rock layers to indicate uh, ages of rocks and relative ages of rocks. And again, the relative ages of rocks tells us about um, what the history of the Earth was like. 
and um, the sequence of events in the Earth's history. In Illinois, we think that Illinois was covered with vast swamplands 300 million years ago, that there was oceanfront property sometime 65 million years ago, and there was also oceans covering a good deal of the northern part of Illinois back in the Ordovician, because a lot of those rocks are, are dolomites and limestones. Um, so those are the type of rocks that you would see in a shallow sea as well. So Illinois was not in the same place it is today, always. Illinois has been floating around on the surface of the earth uh, from the, the tropics all the way into the northern parts, uh, colliding with other lands uh, as plate tectonics operated over the last, uh, you know, two billion years. So the land mass that is Illinois has been created over, over many millions of years um, and has moved around and done pretty, some pretty amazing things. So the history of Illinois is very interesting and geologic maps show how that all works out. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed our lab today on the bedrock geology of Illinois and geologic maps and how they can uh, tell us a lot about the history of an area, uh, give us an idea of where the resources can be found and really give us uh, a good sense of uh, how the earth has been working uh, for many, many billions of years. Uh, so thanks for joining me. I hope you have a great weekend and we'll talk with you soon.